The anime begins at Saren Private Academy, where we meet Alia Mikhailanova Kuju, a girl of Russian descent who garners a lot of attention as she enters the academy. She is approached by Ando, a second-year student with a grand attitude, who introduces himself and mentions that his sister has spoken of her. He soon suggests they have lunch together, but Alia immediately declines, surprising Ando. He then calls her cold and proposes exchanging phone numbers, but Alia refuses again, saying she has no interest in him. This left Ando shocked and frozen, while Alia takes the opportunity to leave, reminding him that his necklace is against school rules. Shortly after, Alia arrives at her classroom 1B and greets her classmate, Masachi Kakuzi. Initially, he doesn't respond because he is asleep in his desk, but Alia kicks his chair to wake him up and asks if he stayed up late watching anime. However, when she sees that he did, she tells him he never learns as he doesn't sleep well, watches anime, and then sleeps in class. Kuzi then explains that the anime ended at 1 a.m. and he talked about it with a friend for two hours. But she thinks he's crazy for doing something like that, to which he replies that if expressing your love for something, no matter the time or place, defines madness, then he will admit that he's crazy. Soon, Kuzi starts yawning, causing Alia to blush a little that when he asks her what she said, she just responds that it was nothing and calls him pathetic to tease him. Not long after, Kuze realizes he forgot his chemistry book and moves his desk next to hers to share. As class progresses, Kuzi keeps yawning, prompting Alia to poke him with her pencil, which made him raise his hand, causing the teacher to think that Kuze wants to answer the question. However, not knowing the answer, Alia shows him the wrong one to embarrass him. Without hiding her intentions, she smiles as her teasing works and calls Kuze adorable in Russian. We then learn a bit about Kuzi's past, where as a child, he often played with a Russian girl who lived near his grandfather's house, which is how he learned to understand spoken Russian. He never thought it would lead to this absurd situation where a beautiful Russian girl teases him in a language he understands but pretends not to, fearing she would faint from embarrassment if she knew. After class, Alia sees Kuzi taking out his phone and reminds him that cell phones are only allowed for emergencies or as references. However, he responds that it is an emergency because the free pull in his game ends in 10 minutes. She isn't pleased with this and asks how he can do that in front of a student council member like her. But when he ignores her, she confiscates his phone and notices that he has won a character named Sukuyomi. She soon notices that this is a reference to the Japanese moon goddess, but doesn't understand why her hair is gray instead of black. However, Kuzai mentions that it's a nod to the moon and that the character is very cute. Despite her annoyance, Alia returns his phone and while Kuzi celebrates his win, she speaks in Russian saying that she also has gray hair before calling him an unfaithful piece of work. Understanding what she said, this made him nervous but he decided to pretend not to understand and proceeded to ask what she said. But to his surprise, she tells him that she called him a gaming addict, making him turn to her and say that's disrespectful since he doesn't spend money on games. After that, Kuzi heads to the cafeteria with his friends. But a few minutes later, the girls from the student council arrive, including Yuki, Alia, and her older sister, Maria Michaelnova, whom they call Masha. Kuzi's friends, Taki and Hiku, comment on how beautiful the sisters are, with Taki showing more interest than usual. However, Hiku thinks Masha has a boyfriend because she keeps rejecting boys, saying that she has a boyfriend. Kuzi even adds that if she didn't have a boyfriend, Taki wouldn't have a chance. But he complains and then talks about other options, mentioning Yuki and Alia. At that moment, Yuki makes eye contact with Kuzi, smiles mischievously, and approaches their table to ask if she can sit with them. Kuzi agrees, and the others do too, with Taki feeling a bit nervous. Alia also sits with them, and as Yuki eats her ramen, she starts talking about the flavor. Seeing this, Alia asks if they are friends, to which Yuki responds that they have known each other since they were kids, having attended the same school since kindergarten. Hiku then asks if Yuki and Alia are friends. But Yuki says they are in the process of becoming friends and that she would like to be friends with Alia. This embarrasses Alia, who says she doesn't think she would be much fun as a friend, but Yuki's kindness starts to convince her otherwise. Suddenly, Taki and Hiku get up to leave, having finished their meal. Now, Kuze is left with Yuki beside him and Alia in front. She then moves her chair closer to his and asks if he's considered her offer to join the student council. But Kuze replies that he's told her a thousand times that he's not interested, even when Yuki thought that he would fit in well with her and Alia, especially since he has experience as a vice president. Seeing Alia doesn't know about this, Yuki explains that when they were in middle school, she was the president and Kuze was the vice president. Kuze mentions he only did it because she asked and that each candidate needed a partner for the elections. Later, they leave and Yuki says goodbye while Alia tells Kuze she's surprised they get along so well since she didn't think any girl would want to be his friend. This confuses Kuze, and he corrects her by pointing out that she is already his friend, which surprised her but soon acknowledges it. 
She then remembers she has student council duties and leaves, looking very happy. We then see a flashback of Kuzi's past, where he played in the park with a Russian girl from his childhood, communicating only in Russian. Back then, Kuze wasn't very fluent, but she helped him by correcting him when necessary. As she said goodbye, she leaned in to kiss his cheek, and suddenly Kuze woke up to a new day, having dreamt about that vivid memory. He comments that he learned Russian like crazy because he wanted to talk to her, but he even forgot her name. Arriving early to class, he starts cleaning, since it's his turn along with Alia to take care of classroom maintenance. But when she arrives, Kuze notices that she's dirty, and she explains that a truck splashed her on the way. However, she mentions that she has spare socks, so it's no big deal. They then talk about him being in the student council with Yuki in middle school and asks if he doesn't want to join the student council again, and he says no. Suddenly, she starts taking off her socks right there, causing Kuzi to quickly look away. Noticing this, Alia smiles mischievously before crossing one leg over the other and asks him to get a sock from her locker since she can't go now. She urges him to hurry, but when Kuzi brings it, Alia asks him to put it on for her, which alarms him. She explains that it's a reward for bringing the sock, thinking it would be a good prize for someone like him. However, she then says in Russian that it's a reward for her too, making Kuzi wonder why her expressions of affection in Russian surprise him so much. He thinks maybe her obsession with being perfect is exhausting her, and she's using him as an outlet, exposing herself emotionally like an exhibitionist. Seeing him distracted, she asks what's wrong, and he says he wanted to know what she said. Alia then explains that she called him a coward, then tries to put the sock on herself, but Kuzi stops her and takes the initiative. He grabs her foot, causing her to get very nervous and exclaims she's not ready. As Kuzi tries to put on the sock, she squirms and makes strange noises. When he finishes, his hand accidentally touches her thigh and out of embarrassment, she kicks him hard. Later, Kuzi begs for her forgiveness, which she accepts, apologizing for kicking him. When he says he's fine, she checks on him to be sure. Nervously, he steps back, saying he should thank her for showing him something precious. Realizing he might have seen something under her skirt when she kicked him, she understands he saw her underwear. Unable to take it back, Kuze bows and thanks her for showing him something wonderful, which makes Alia furious. She kits him and starts insulting him in Russian, feeling really offended and embarrassed. After this, Alia runs away and Kuzi chases her around the school for 10 minutes until they are both exhausted. He takes the opportunity to apologize and she admits she's partly to blame. Kuzi then kneels and offers her a can of drink as a peace offering. Alia, being childish, thinks it's a poor act but loves sweet red bean soup and accepts it. She smiles slightly and asks in Russian if he wants a sip. This question makes Kuzai alert, thinking this might lead to an indirect kiss. Still pretending not to understand Russian, he asks what she said. Alia replies that she mentioned there's nothing like something sweet after exercise, once again using the moment to tease him with her wicked smile. Missing the chance for an indirect kiss, Kuzai feels frustrated. Some days pass by and one afternoon Yuki asks Kuze to help her clear out the council room. He reluctantly agrees not being used to physical work, but meets up with her regardless. They soon start chatting when suddenly Alia appears from behind some boxes, looking a bit annoyed at the closeness between Yuki and Kuze. He realizes that Yuki definitely set this whole thing up to mess with him, and she knows Alia likes him. However, during cleaning, Yuki keeps chatting with him while Alia, seemingly getting even more annoyed, tells Kuze to pay more attention to work. Yuki realizes this is the perfect time, so she excuses herself and leaves. Suddenly, Kuze hears Alia mumble in Russian that even she wants some attention too, telling him to come near her in Russian. Meanwhile, Kuze wonders what kind of thirsty thoughts someone must have to talk so openly. Thankfully for him, the remaining work gets sorted out pretty quickly, and as he is about to leave, the door suddenly opens and a tall senior enters the room, surprised to see it all so clean already. Yuke tells him that Kuze helped them, so he thanks Kuze and introduces himself as Ken, the president of the student council. He then tells Kuze that he has heard a lot about him from both Alia and Yuki, but Kuze starts feeling uncomfortable and decides to leave. However, Ken stops him, claiming that since he helped them after school, he will buy him dinner tonight. Politely refuses the offer, Kuze claims that he was just helping some friends, but before he can leave, Yuka jumps into the conversation and tells him that he should accept the gift as he will have to cook for himself at home anyway. Hearing this, Ken ends up making the decision for them and also invites both Yuki and Aliyev to join them for dinner. Later that evening, they all go down to a family restaurant and sit down while Ken thanks Kuze again for helping with the council work. Yuki tells him that Kuze is pretty good at physical work as he gets it done quickly. Moreover, he is an expert negotiator. Ken also immediately recognizes his talent and offers him a position in the student council. However, Kuze again politely refuses, claiming that he has done the student council work forever, as he didn't really enjoy it during middle school. 
However, Ken also agrees that it is definitely a lot of work, but tells him that it has its own benefits as well. He tells Kuze that being in a student council means that he has an automatic recommendation to join the best colleges in the country. But even after this, Kuze shows no interest as he simply wants to watch anime and grow his harem. Unfortunately for him, Yuki wouldn't stop persuading him and tells him that they can run for the next council president once again, just like they did in middle school. But Kuze refuses more firmly this time, while Ken tells him that Yuki is going to have tough competition as Alia is also going to run for the council president. Having no idea about this, he looks at her for confirmation and Alia tells him that she is indeed going to run against Yuki next year during the elections. But before they could talk any further, their food arrived. After dinner, they all part ways as Ken heads in the other direction alongside Yuki, leaving Kuze to drop Alia back home. On the way back, Kuze asks Alia whether she is actually going to run against Yuki, but she doesn't seem very eager to talk about it and tells him that she will go on her own from there. Kuze soon bids her goodbye and heads back home only to find Yuki sprawled on the couch reading a romantic novel. It turns out that Yuki is actually Kuze's real sister, but because she wants to be his wingman, she is pretending to be his love interest to make Alia jealous and want him more. However, he tells her that he doesn't need her help and heads back to sleep. The next morning, he gets woken up by his annoying sister once again, who jumps on top of his Excalibur and tells him to get up even though it's a Sunday. This lovely sister then drags Kuze all the way to a mall to have some good breakfast, but she soon forces him to watch a movie with her. Initially, Kuze refuses Yuki's suggestion, so they head to a nearby clothing store instead. However, while browsing, Kuze notices Yuki's behavior has changed and asks what's up. She then tells him that she noticed something silver tailing them, so she's going to stop behaving like his sister. Kuze wonders what he should do, but before he can say anything, Yuki moves toward Alia and greets her warmly. Embarrassed, Alia pretends she just came to shop for clothes and met them by coincidence. However, Yuki asks Alia if she has had lunch yet and invites her to join them at a restaurant. She then asks if Alia likes spicy food. But Alia, having only had mildly spicy curry before, claims she is fine with spices. Yuki then tells her they are going to a ramen place that serves very spicy food and invites her along. But Kyuze decides to come clean and tells Alia that the ramen is not just normal spicy. However, Alia feels like Kuze is trying to push her away to be alone with Yuki, so she decides to join them regardless. They soon head to the ramen place, which scares Alia as she has never seen such a demonic-looking restaurant before. Soon, they order a bowl of ramen each and Alia notices that Yuki is wearing quite boyish clothes today. Yuki then uses this to her advantage and tells Alia that she was in bed with Kuze this morning and borrowed one of his shirts for the day. Hearing this, Kuze spits out the water he was drinking while Alia looks at him darkly. He tries to explain, claiming that she just ended up jumping on his bed while he was sleeping, but Alia doesn't buy it for a second. Thankfully, the ramen arrives just in time, shocking Alia completely as she has never seen something so red and hot, except for your mother. Yuki and Kuze seem fine with it, and Yuki tells them all to dig in before the noodles get soggy. Deciding she can't be left behind, Alia takes out her chopsticks, cools the noodles down a bit, and gulps them down. Immediately, the spice hits her, but she pretends to be fine. Kuze and Yuki start eating and don't find the spice too much as they are used to it. But Kuze soon hears Alia mumbling in Russian about how insanely hot it is and gets worried. He then asks her not to eat it, suggesting they can get something else for her. However, Alia insists she likes the heat a lot even though Kuze can see her tearing up and asking for help in Russian. Not long after, Yuki asks Alia what she thinks of the dish, but when Alia says she likes it, Yuki messes with her more by giving her hot sauce to add to her ramen. Kuze tells Alia not to do it, but she refuses to lose this battle. So she puts a small amount of sauce in her noodles and tries it again. This time, she screams loudly, unable to control herself, and runs out of the restaurant. The scene then shifts to Kuze and Alia alone in a park, asking if she's okay. She replies that she is fine, but Kuze offers to get her some ice cream, and she immediately agrees. He gets her a triple scoop, she likes much more than the hellish ramen. While she eats, Kuze asks why she wants to become the council president, which sours her mood quickly. She tells him that she just wants to try, but when asked if she has a partner, she replies that she doesn't, claiming she doesn't need one and can do it all herself. He tells her it doesn't work that way as she needs someone to run for vice president with her. However, she continues by saying that she will find a random person and put their name down in the register and should be fine. Under her breath, she mumbles in Russian that she would want him to be her partner. She soon finishes up her ice cream and asks Kuze if he has any plans, as she wants him to help her shop for some clothes. Kuze agrees to help, claiming they are friends, which surprises her a little. She wonders if he is feeling pity for her, because he thinks she doesn't stand a chance against Yuki. 
Determined to blow his mind with her fashion sense, she angrily walks into the changing room but gets cold feet, thinking, what if he doesn't react at all? Nevertheless, she still comes out of the room, and to her surprise, the moment Kyuze sees her, he immediately compliments her, saying the dress makes her look even prettier than usual. This blows her mind as she silently closes the curtains and starts panicking, while on the other side, Kuze starts feeling embarrassed about the cringy lines he just spoke. However, Alia decides to keep it going, so she starts changing her dresses one by one, giving a full-on fashion show to Kuze, who compliments each and every dress, making her feel even better. She finally decides to try something a little more revealing and opens the curtains to pose, only to see that Yuki has also arrived. Upon seeing her, she quietly backs off and shuts the curtains, feeling embarrassed and wanting to crawl into a hole. Later that evening, they head back together on the train, but Alia is still too flustered to talk. Finally, Yuki and Kuze's station comes, so they bid her goodbye and get off the train. There, Alia starts cursing herself for wearing something so skimpy, thinking Kuze will now see her as a nasty girl. But suddenly, she came to the realization that both of them got off the same station. That night, Alia returns home looking a bit down. She is immediately greeted by her sister, Masha, who hugs her and asks how her day was. However, she replies lazily that it was fine and heads to her room. Masha, not easily fooled, asks if something happened since Alia isn't acting like herself. She soon takes a deep breath and explains that she just came back from meeting Kuze and his childhood friend. Realizing this is about a boy, Masha smiles and asks Alia if she likes him. But Alia quickly defends herself, insisting that they are just friends and nothing more. Hearing this, Masha continues to laugh and asks how this guy managed to capture her heart, given that she never liked being friends with lazy slackers and always preferred perfectionists. The scene then shifted to six years ago in Russia, where she had a group project about local businesses. She eagerly divided the work among her friends and meticulously planned everything out, aiming for their report to be the best in the class. There, she followed the schedule perfectly and collected data on several businesses alone on Sunday. However, when she returned to school on Monday, she discovered that none of her friends had even started. Frustrated, she told them the report would take a lot of time, but they seemed unconcerned, claiming they had a full week. However, one of her friends noticed her work notebook and pointed out that Alia had already written a whole essay. They told her to chill out as it was just a school assignment. But Alia, being a perfectionist, insisted they take it seriously. This led to a major argument with one friend telling her to do it alone if she wanted perfection and then leaving. That evening, Alia stayed late, continuing to work on the report every day until the results were revealed. But to her disappointment, another group won because their report was more cohesive, while Alia held back tears, clutching the work she did alone. As she walked home with tears in her eyes, she decided never to depend on anyone again, believing they would always disappoint her. After that, she passed a difficult exam and transferred to Japan. On her first day, she gave a speech at the ceremony, immediately becoming a favorite. After the assembly, when class was about to start, she noticed Kuze sleeping on his desk. She then woke him up, telling him class was about to begin, and he groggily told her her speech was phenomenal. Alia then introduced herself, expecting everyone at this prestigious school to be perfectionists like her. However, she soon realized most students were slackers, especially Kuze, who never brought the correct books, was behind in physical education, and slept through math class. As time passed, she withdrew into her shell, disappointed once again. Then one day, the school festival arrived. Their duties were divided, but despite being behind, the students remained relaxed and went home, while Alia worked overtime sewing the banner. However, she hurt herself and put on a band-aid when suddenly, the door slammed open and Kuze entered. Alia was surprised to see him after school hours, but he told her she shouldn't overwork and should go home. At this point, Alia was prickly and told him to mind his own business as she had a lot of work to do. But Kuze reassured her not to worry, explaining that he had used some connections to get permission to stay overnight in the school to help. He had also made friends in the handicraft club and convinced them to assist with the festival work. With more people to help, he urged her to relax and go home. Overwhelmed, Alia teared up and confessed that she couldn't relax because she wanted to create a festival that everyone would genuinely enjoy, refusing to compromise on quality. However, Kuze told her she was putting all her efforts in the wrong places, suggesting that if she had focused on convincing everyone else to work together, it would have reduced her workload and involved all the students. Frustrated, she left the room, wondering what his problem was. The next day, everything changed. Kuze had somehow motivated everyone to do their best for the festival, resulting in a flurry of ideas and enthusiastic participation. Students started staying late, working together and having fun, and slowly, Alia began to open up to her classmates. Surprisingly, on the day of the festival, their attraction was a huge hit, winning the Best Attraction Award by a large margin. 
The festival ended with a student dance where Alia found Kuze sitting alone. He asked why she wasn't dancing, noting that everyone would want to dance with her. But she said she didn't want to because every boy kept bothering her about it. Kuze laughed and told her that people were calling her the Ice Princess because of her attitude. However, Alia wasn't thrilled about the nickname, saying it made her feel like people thought she was born with everything, even though she had worked hard for her achievements. Alia then apologized for lashing out at him the other day and asked if she could do anything to show her gratitude. Initially, Kuze told her it wasn't necessary, acknowledging her efforts, but he soon wished for one thing, to call Alia by her first name. Just then, a group of boys appeared, pressuring her for a dance. Seeing this, Kuze took matters into his own hands, grabbed her arm, and asked her for a dance as her way of thanking him. Back in the present, Masha commented that it sounded like the start of a beautiful love story. Alia, however, kept on insisting they were just friends, but Masha wasn't convinced, smiling knowingly. The next morning, Kuze went to the student council to cover for Yuki, who was absent. There he met Masha, who mentioned she had heard a lot about him and needed help shopping for supplies. Kuze agreed, and as Masha thanked him and grabbed his hand, she felt a sense of familiarity. She asked for his full name, and upon hearing it, she realized something but kept it to herself. She then tried to test Kuze by switching to Russian, but Kuze tried to play it off. At the shopping mall, Masha got distracted by some stuffed toys, buying a cat plushie and considering a lion with glasses for the council president. However, Kuze advised against it, saying the president wouldn't like it. They then ended up buying a cat that resembled Alia and continued to a tea shop, where Masha tried different brews. There, Kuze suddenly remembered his parents' separation when he was young, explaining how he stayed with his dad while Yuki went with her mom, forcing the siblings to be separated. Coming back to the present, he found Masha looking worried. Turns out, she noticed his pained expression and hugged him, stroking his hair. This shocked him, bringing a wave of nostalgia and a sense of familiarity and relaxation. However, the moment was cut short when he accidentally burned himself with a hot teacup, while still wondering why Masha's touch reminded him of his childhood. Upon arriving at the student council room, Masha shows the new mascot to the president. Kenzaki admits the creature is cute but hopes Masha doesn't plan to keep it there. Kuze then places the supplies they bought on the table and Kenzaki thanks him, commenting that he can't imagine what would happen if Masha had gone shopping alone. However, Kuze knows well that the council would turn into a theme park designed by a six-year-old. The president pats Kuze on the shoulder and asks if he's reconsidered joining the council, but Kuze remains firm in his decision, though he doesn't mind helping out occasionally. Suddenly, Masha suggests he join in name only, and Kuze understands she wants him to join, but he's unsure why the president is so insistent. Kenzaki then turns the question around, asking why Kuze is so determined not to join, as he believes there's more to it than just the workload. However, Kuze explains that he doesn't feel worthy of being a student council representative, but the president disagrees, reminding him that he was an excellent vice president in middle school. Unbeknownst to him that it was this sole experience that convinced Kuze he's not suited for the role, as he felt he had no relevant goals in that position. Suddenly, Kenzaki confesses he became president to win the heart of a girl he liked. Can't help but laugh, Kuze asks if Kenzaki is serious and to prove his point, so he shows a photo of himself as an unconfident boy in his last year of middle school. Just two years ago, he had bad grades and hated sports in school, until he fell in love with one of the prettiest girls in the class, now his girlfriend and vice president, Sarah Chizaki. He believes that Kuze doesn't need a proper reason to join, knowing that Masha only joined because Chizaki asked her to. Kenzaki then reminds Kuze that he has already shown his capabilities as vice president once, which is proof enough that he has nothing to be ashamed of. This comment brings Kuze back to the memory of his election in middle school, where his sister had asked him to stay by her side, but he thought it would be too much trouble. Faced with this, Kuze says he'll think about it, so Kenzaki notes that having time to think is a privilege of youth. Reflecting on the proposal, Kuze asks where Alia is. Turns out, she was sent to mediate a dispute between the baseball and soccer teams. The baseball team needs the field for their inter-school games, but the soccer team has made it to the regional qualifiers and also needs the field. Neither team wants to give in, especially since the baseball team is visited by scouts who recruit players for professional leagues and their captain has been featured on TV. Usually, Chizaki mediates between the clubs, but she's busy with important matters in the kendo club, so Kenzaki sent Alia to gain experience, though she's having trouble. Hearing this, Kuze excuses himself to check on the situation between the teams, Meanwhile, in the locker room, Alia is sweating bullets amidst a group of determined athletes. Trying to control everyone's anger, Alia emphasizes that belittling others won't solve the situation. However, the soccer goalie asks if she has a better idea, so she suggests they use the nearby Riverside Park to train since it has both baseball and soccer fields. 
but the school's field is in much better condition, so no one wants to give it up. This fact reignites the argument and Alia tries to be heard once more, but is drowned out by the boys shouting. Faced with this, she feels like a failure who can't influence people. This then reminds her of when she was younger and decided she wouldn't trust people anymore, only to regret it later. It was that day where she resolved to do everything alone because no one could keep up with her pace. Now she pays the price for having isolated herself and scorned interaction with others. Thinking about it, Alia concludes that she is completely alone, and this feeling brings tears to her eyes, especially since she is sure it's her own fault. In Russian, she quietly asks for help, as if someone could somehow hear her. Suddenly, Kuzi awkwardly enters the locker room and apologizes for interrupting. He then announces that he is responsible for general matters of the student council, and has been sent as reinforcement for the mediation. The scene shifts to moments earlier, where Kuze had been listening to the argument and how Alia was trying to calm everyone down. He realized that her approach wouldn't work because both sides were too heated, so it would be good for the council to buy some time to start over. Despite this, Kuze believes it's a good experience for Alia. He then turns to leave until he hears her asking for help in Russian. But before entering the locker room, he thinks that this is why Alia is always alone as she only says important things in a language no one understands. When he gets into the locker room, one of the baseball players recognizes him as the former vice president during elementary school. There he arrives with a bang and emphasizes that the big question is who gets the school field and who goes to the river. He then suggests that the baseball team take the river since they have fewer players to move. In exchange, the soccer team, which has more people, will send some to help with the process. Still, the soccer players don't want to cooperate and the baseball team won't budge either. So the soccer assistants offered help with the relocation, calming everyone's nerves. With the terms agreed upon between both parties, the matter is officially resolved. Kuze then asks the captain from each side to attend the student council with their formal requests. Later, when returning to the council room, Kuze apologizes to Alia for thinking he might have run over her in the middle of the discussion. However, she didn't see anything wrong but wanted to know why he made that proposal, because it seemed like he knew the assistant would offer help. Moreover, Kuze was staring at the assistant the whole time during the discussion. He soon explains that the girl is dating the captain of the baseball team, and as the team leader he had to stick to his convictions even if he wanted to help his girlfriend. What Kuze did was give the girl a little nudge by looking directly at her and instigating a decision from her. Considering that, as the baseball captain's girlfriend, she wouldn't feel out of place helping. On their way, Kenzaki approaches the two and asks if the case was settled. But upon knowing that it was resolved, the president thanks Alia for her help, making Kuze imagine that it was all planned to make him intervene in the mediation on purpose. Having no reason to lie, Kenzaki admits that was the plan and asks if Kuze has made up his mind. However, this time, Kuze changes his mind and makes himself available. Happy, Kenzaki calls the new member to the council room. But on the way home, Kuze confesses that he doesn't like the feeling of being tricked, but believes it's time to accept his fate, because all his actions pushed him toward the student council. Alia asks if Kuze will join the presidential election with Yuki, noting that if it's true, she won't give up on becoming president, even if it means facing both of them. Remembering how determined Alia is, Kuze knows well that she won't give up because she's an unwavering force. However, suddenly, he states that he will make her president because he doesn't want Alia to be alone anymore. Therefore, from now on, they are on the same side. Saying this, he extends his hand, and Alia wipes her tears and reciprocates the gesture. Then she surprises Kuze with a phrase in Russian that makes his heart race. This reminded him of when he was a child playing with his Russian friend, he felt the same thing, and now he discovers he can feel it again. Suddenly, Alia crushes his hand and asks if he was thinking about another girl. This causes Kuze to confess in shock and soon realizes he committed the second biggest mistake a romantic comedy protagonist could make in a confession. Alia then quickly assumes that the boy was thinking about Yuki. But before he can deny it, he hits another tight squeeze on his hand. Finally, she slaps his face in exchange for forgiving him for the mistake. This causes Kuze to fall, but then she extends her hand to help him up. As they walk home, Kuze confesses that it's the first time he's been slapped by a girl and believes it gave him experience as a man. In response, Alia comments that the boy must have hit his head on the ground in the fall unless he has a defective brain from the factory. At the building's door, the Russian girl asks if Kuze wants ice to put on his face, but he says he's fine since he doesn't feel anything on the left side of his face. But to his surprise, Alia kisses the right side and says goodbye. When she goes up to her room, Alia panics, remembering that she says she loves Kuze in Russian. She starts denying to herself that she indeed feels that way about him, pretending she just got carried away by the heat of the moment. Even if she's in love, hypothetically speaking, her priority is to be elected president of the student council. And that's what she should focus on right now. 
However, Alia can't stop imagining tomorrow when she returns to school and Kuze says he didn't mean it when he said they were on the same side. At that moment, her older sister arrives and says she met a wonderful person. She then shows a stuffed kitten and says it looks like her sister, although Alia doesn't think so. Later, Masha comments that Kuze is a great guy and understands why her sister fell in love with him. Although Alia denies it, her sister warns that she needs to confess her feelings to him as soon as possible because any day she might end up losing the one she loves to someone else. At the same time, Kuze was wrestling with the internal struggle everyone faces after saying something they perceive as stupid or cheesy in front of someone they want to impress. He was quite sure Alia had confessed her love for him. Initially, this gave him hope that the things she said in Russian weren't just jokes. But she seemed genuinely serious when she said it today, yet Kuze couldn't believe that someone like her could love him, given his low self-esteem. He preferred to think that Alia had simply gotten caught up in the moment and acted impulsively, thinking that in his mind she was probably at home screaming into her pillow out of embarrassment and regret. Having grown up watching his parents fight, Kuze saw love as fragile and unreliable, sometimes even a waste of time. Although he had promised to stay by Alia's side, he still felt guilty for once abandoning his sister, leaving her to bear the Sue family name alone. When Kuze arrived home, he noticed Yuki's shoes at the entrance, despite her saying she'd be out. He headed straight to the bathroom, where Yuki had left the door open and was caught undressed. Although Yuki screamed and called her brother a pervert, Kuze suspected she had planned it, reasoning that leaving the door unlocked wasn't a wise way to ensure privacy. To his surprise, Yuki confessed she had done it on purpose because they had never experienced a classic sibling scene where a brother accidentally walks in on his sister dressing. She insisted that every pair of siblings should experience this at least once in their lives. But Kuze told her that such ideas only made sense in her crazy otaku brain. However, Yuki was determined to see the scene through to the end, even breaking the fourth wall by looking at an imaginary camera for a fan service photo. Kuze questioned her actions, and she explained that she was looking at a camera only an idiot couldn't see. Annoyed, he grumbled again, so Yuki declared that this was her reward for tricking her brother earlier, but Kuze retorted that he didn't want to be rewarded by seeing her in his own sister in her birthday suit. However, Yuki insisted he had taken a secret peek, prompting Kuze to explain that seeing everything at once wasn't enjoyable. Shocked by such an outrageous statement, Yuki regained her composure and agreed that was indeed the trick, making sure to find out if he had taken a look. Feeling cornered, Kuze admitted he had accidentally seen her oranges, igniting another round of bickering. Later in Kuze's room, Yuki asked that he had finally decided to join the council. He admitted he had, but he planned to support Alia for president. This declaration upset Yuki, making her feel like she was losing her brother to the Russian girl. She couldn't understand why she couldn't keep her brother entertained with her own charms, or perhaps Alia had some special allure she wasn't aware of. Kuze then asked his sister to be a bit less graphic in her description, but she continued to tease him. First, she wondered if he wanted to be the first to honk his sister's oranges, but then recalled that it already happened in elementary school. Reflecting on this, Yuki's humor vanished and she assumed a serious expression, recalling the day they collided during a game of tag when Kuzi accidentally touched something he shouldn't have. He then remembered how quiet his sister was back then, causing Yuki to lose her composure and demand that he pamper her instead of judging her past behavior. She then handed him her hairbrush, and he brushed her hair without complaint, apologizing for choosing to support Alia for student council president. However, Yuki didn't mind. In fact, she liked the idea of experiencing a classic sibling rivalry just like in books and movies. Despite his lingering guilt, Kuze assured her he hadn't stopped liking her because of it, and Yuki had no doubts about that. Before leaving the room, she stated that they were now rivals, but Yuki made it clear she was willing to forgive his betrayal and would welcome his support if he ever changed his mind about Alia. However, Kuze felt uncomfortable when his sister referred to his choice as a betrayal, but he assured her that he wouldn't abandon his Russian waifu. Yuki, on the other hand, was convinced that he would eventually change his mind. With that, she said goodbye to her brother, and outside his room, she lamented not being the one to motivate him. Despite pretending not to care much in front of him, she didn't like losing. When morning came, Kuze woke up with a lingering doubt, wondering if he had hurt his sister during their conversation the previous day. Knowing Yuki was emotionally unstable, he intended to make it up to her for not supporting her for student council president. However, he was soon proven wrong as she attempted to prank him only to get stuck under the bed in the process. Instead of pulling her out, Kuze jokingly threatened to cover her and end her life once and for all. Later, Alia was deep in thought, feeling some anticipation for the arrival of the boy she liked. Every time a man entered the room, she was startled, thinking it was Kuze. She tried to stay calm and act normal, but got another scare when Kuze actually arrived. 
She then quickly pretended to be unbothered to hide her feelings, but despite her efforts, it was becoming increasingly difficult to ignore the glow she saw around him. When Kuze sat at the table and chatted with his friends, he displayed a much more cheerful mood than usual. This caused the Russian girl to wonder why he hadn't arrived, yawning like always. Somehow, she felt he was adjusting his behavior to be around her, just as he had promised yesterday. Meanwhile, during a volleyball game, Alia was lost in thought when a teammate called her attention to the ball coming her way. She immediately jumped up to spike it, scoring the winning point. Later, during the boys' game, Kuze wasn't so lucky, getting hit in the back of the head by a ball during his team's serve. Getting a bump on his head, the poor guy tried to recover while his stomach growled with hunger. Alia soon approached to check on him, but he assured her it was nothing serious. For some reason, Alia placed her hand on her own forehead and then on Kuze's, giving him a prime view of the mountain Everest that Yuki didn't possess. At that moment, he recalled his sister's strange talk about this and swallowed hard with embarrassment. Then Alia tied her hair up, revealing the edge of her armpit, driving the boy even crazier. Soon after, Alia asked why he was acting this way and he pretended it was nothing. She then stood up and suggested he drink some water, which he did, accompanied by Alia. Like the Russian girl, the Japanese boy was finding it hard to stop staring at his friend, trying his best to calm his tiny little sword by diving into the water. Amidst all this, Masha arrived to chat with our man who is now staring at the clouds. Weirdly, he talked about the blue sky and everything around it, but inside, all he could think about was how much he had come to appreciate gym uniforms after today. Masha then asked if he had a towel to dry out from the water fountain, but the guy was old school and preferred to let the sun do the job. Without warning, Masha pulled Kuze's head down and started rubbing it with her towel, causing him to get the view of his lifetime. Feeling jealous, Alia pulls her friend back to the classroom and asks Masha to do the same. On the way back, Kuze was already wondering where this was going and closed his eyes when Alia spoke to him, expecting a scolding. However, the Russian girl was asking if he was feeling better, showing the same kindness as yesterday. Curious about her sudden, affectionate mode, he asked if Alia wasn't being too nice, and she replied that she was worried because he'd been acting strange all day. However, Kuze simply explained that he forgot to eat breakfast, which explained his lack of energy. He also tells her that he didn't sleep in class today because he had a good night's sleep, which made Alia furious because she could hardly sleep last night, thinking about what he had said. Annoyed, she walked away and Kuze was glad because this was the Alia he knew. At the end of the day, he asked Alia to stop by the student council room, but she was too angry to respond. Still, she followed the path he wanted, so he silently followed behind. In one of the hallways, the soccer and baseball players were acting like army recruits in front of the council room. Not understanding anything, Kuze opened the door and came face to face with Chizaki, who was carrying a bamboo katana on her shoulder. As he was about to close the door, claiming he knocked on the wrong door, a girl stopped him. However, she soon returned to her normal behavior and explained that she was just angry because she thought it was the soccer and baseball guys coming back. Chizaki was furious because she had sent a junior student to mediate the conflict between the teams, but from what she heard, they all ignored her and kept fighting like fools. For this reason, the senior student used the bamboo sword on some of them. Kuze thought it was excessive to carry a sword, but the girl was sure that a bamboo strike wouldn't kill anyone. But as soon as she said this, she started laughing and Kuze forced a laugh to not make the situation worse, as he knew Chizaki well and some boys even called her Big Sis because of her behavior. Kenzaki soon intervened to ease the tension, explaining that his girlfriend didn't hurt anyone but just threatened them if they didn't agree to behave nicely. Irritated for being exposed, Chizaki slapped the boy, who thought his shoulder would get dislocated. At this moment, Masha arrived at the meeting and asked the couple not to fool around in the council room. Embarrassed, Chizaki apologized her boyfriend, but he responded that it was good to take those slaps because they relieved some of the pain he was feeling. Still feeling guilty, the girl claimed she couldn't control her strength, so Kenzaki promised to prepare to become a punching bag if that's what it takes to be by her side. With that said, Shizaki pulled the man closer to her, making Kuze wonder how on earth this turned into a romantic scene. Alia then joined in the fun, and they both laughed at what was happening. Then Masha came closer and commented that the two really got along, making Elia blush. Now it was Yuki's turn to arrive late, and with that, the student council meeting finally began. But first of all, the president asked the newest member to introduce himself, so he said his name and mentioned that he would be running for the presidential election alongside Alia. Kuze introduces himself as a big fan of Otaka Media, willing to chat about it with anyone interested. The president then announces that Kuze is officially part of the council and assigns him to assist Masha as his first task. Kenzaki assures that Kuze will quickly adapt to his new role thanks to his experience as vice president. However, he mentions that working with the girls will be an exciting challenge, especially since the council is short-staffed and it's a good opportunity for Kuze to prove himself. 
But Yuki interrupts, saying she needs to go to the art club to discuss their next exhibition. She requests Alia, the organization's treasurer, to join her since the project budget will likely be a topic of discussion. Alia agrees and the president gives them the green light. As they leave, Kuze senses that trouble might arise and Alia shares the same feeling. While heading to their task, Alia can't resist calling Yuki for a chat. So Yuki agrees and suggests they use an empty classroom nearby. Inside, Alia reiterates her intention to run for president alongside Kuze. She doesn't apologize as she doesn't believe she's doing anything wrong, but she feels she should say it personally to Yuki. However, Yuki sees no need for an apology as Kuze himself chose this path. Yuki admits she felt bad for not being Kuze's choice for the election, but goes further by confessing she loves him, which surprises Alia. To make things more intense, Yuki claims she loves him more than her own parents and provocatively asks if Alia loves him too. Initially, Alia replies that Kuze is just a friend, but Yuki presses on to know if Alia has feelings for her brother. Relentlessly, Yuki pushes Alia against the wall until she admits she doesn't know if she's in love or not. After a pause to gather courage, Alia confesses she won't let Yuki have him. Yuki, pleased to hear this, calls her council colleague to join her at the art club. Since she heard Kuze and Masha calling Alia by her nickname, Yuki decides to do the same and asks to be called by her first name in return. Meanwhile, Masha and Kuze work together, and Kuze notices that Masha is highly efficient when it comes to delivering results. On the other hand, the president's girlfriend, Chizaki, is extremely clumsy. Kenzaki realizes things aren't going well and suggests Chizaki help with the library's restocking. Eager to prove herself, she rushes to her new task. While Kenzaki expresses his impatience with her blunders, once she's gone, he explains that despite Chizaki's clumsiness, she is a formidable force in club and committee discussions. To avoid embarrassment, Kuze comments that every council member has their strengths and weaknesses. With the president's departure, Masha suggests taking a tea break and has everything needed for a great drink, including milk, sugar, and even strawberry jam. Kuze recalls that this jam is used in Russian tea and requests a cup, thinking black tea is more common for Russians in winter. But Masha explains that it depends on the family as hers drinks it year-round, a habit passed down from her mother, who loved the drink. Kuze mentions his fondness for Russia, sparked by watching Russian movies with his grandfather as a child, and reveals he studied Russian intensely to speak with a girl he loved in his childhood. They soon enjoy the Russian tea, and Kuze is enamored with the flavor. He soon watches Masha eat jam separately from the tea and curiously asks why, but she says it's just for preference. As he tries to follow her lead, he finds the jam too sweet. At this moment, Alia and Yuki return after finishing their task, so Masha offers them tea which Yuki eagerly accepts, while Alia is less enthusiastic after her challenging encounter with Yuki. Suddenly, Alia sits close to Kuze, explaining that sitting at the corner of the table is considered bad luck in her country. Despite her day not going well, she sits so close that Kuze is pushed to the other side, while Yuki shoots a jealous look at her council colleague. The Russian girl doesn't hold back, so Kuze realizes he's caught in the middle of a battle. To ease the tension, he asks Masha if it's true about sitting at the corner of the table, and she confirms it, adding that according to local culture, single people who sit at the corner will never marry. However, the older sister then asks if the younger one has found someone to marry. But Alia pretends she just didn't want to sit on the edge, switching to her native language to say it's too early to think about marriage. Steven Masha serves her sister a plate filled with jelly before the tea. Later, Kenzaki announces that the work for the day is done, and since the second year students still need to discuss something with the teachers, the freshmen can go home. Walking home with Alia, Kuze senses his sister did something wrong because the Russian girl seems irritated. But as they walked past a family diner, he invited Alia inside to talk about her candidacy for president. Despite agreeing readily, she mutters in Russian, upset that this isn't a date. Inside the diner, Kuze asks why Alia looks annoyed. She claims to be just tired but soon asks if he's dating Yuki. Kuze seriously responds that he's not and takes the opportunity to advise Alia. He explains that Yuki is just having fun with her to see her reactions. Putting that aside, he brings up the candidacy issue, making it clear that at this rate, they won't be able to beat Yuki, who is very popular. Remembering when he ran against his sister years ago in another school, Kuze recalls that there were six competing tickets, unlike the three in his current school. In that election, out of the 12 people who entered, half dropped out of the Children's Congress a bit before the election. The Congress is a debate contest held by the students as if the school's baseball and soccer teams couldn't agree and had to debate in the Congress to decide. When this Congress presents presidential candidates, it becomes a preview of the election, and once they debate their policies and one side wins, the winner usually becomes the favorite for the student council race. Anyway, this race gets filtered down until only a few candidates for the student council presidency remain. 
But when Yuki began to stand out, everyone dropped out of the race against her. While Kuze explains all this, Alia bites her straw in anger and tension, only realizing it much later since she seems more focused on her homeland than on the conversation. He asks if she's listening, and Alia pretends she's just fascinated by the ice cream and gets distracted. In reality, she's furious about how her friend is acting, giving so much credit to the brash Yuki and practically declaring her the president in advance. Not wanting to look bad, Alia insists on the ice cream business and offers some to her council colleague. He prefers to get a new spoon, but Alia doesn't want to bother another waiter with such a trifle, practically shoving the spoon into the boy's mouth. She insists this is very common in Russia. As soon as Kuze tastes the sweet from the spoon that had been in Alia's mouth, he realizes this is a classic case of an indirect kiss. Everyone around looks on with expressions of shock and excitement at this unique scene, until Kuze sees Tamiyama passing by but says nothing about it. Returning to the election topic, he mentions that to defeat Yuki, they need a campaign that attracts students to his side. Using Kenzaki's candidacy as an example, Kenzaki had been elected despite running against a former president from an elementary school. His strategy was that the journalism club published articles mocking and belittling him, thinking he was still the chubby bully kid from school. However, people saw his significant transformation along with his grades, seeing this as a case of overcoming adversity. People began to support him for the presidency, so Alia having such a story would be beneficial. With that said, the two turn to the table and start wondering what to do with the spoon that had the indirect kiss until Kuze confesses that the situation makes him a bit nervous. Alia teases her friend, thinking he's better with girls. He asks if this is really common in Russia, and she replies in her native language that she would only do this with him. Kuze is starting to anticipate such responses, so he doesn't freak out this time. Returning to the presidency topic, he says they need to build a great opening speech for the student body to start laying out the strategy they discussed. Although Alia isn't sure what to say, Kuze advises that the key is to be spontaneous and not hide anything from the people, as this creates real identification. After all, he finds the Russian girl captivating just the way she is. With that, she replies in Russian that she wants more compliments and would love to know in detail what he meant by that. Setting that aside, a spicy dish Kuze ordered is served at the table. When he offers some, the girl is terrified of embarrassing herself in front of the boy she likes but wants to be a good sport and accepts a spoonful. While the angel and devil in the boy's mind debate whether to do it or not, Kuze apologizes for what he's about to do and ends up giving her some. Also tense in the small bowl he separates, there is simply an entire chili pepper, which Alia puts entirely in her mouth and chews. Naturally, the reaction isn't great, to the point of calling her friend an idiot in Russian. On the way home, the poor girl is still all spicy but pretends to be okay. However, what burns inside her most is the desire to beat Yuki in the election. Regarding this, she wants to know who her rival would choose as vice president, but Kuze thinks it doesn't matter much. However, as it would have to be someone who has been on the council, maybe she would choose to Kimiyama, which would be bad news since that girl went to the end in the elementary school election and won alongside Yuki at the time. Speaking of which, Kuze remembers that Taniyama gave up becoming president that year. The next day, Yuki introduces Kimishima Ayano from Class 1C to the council. Ayano states that she will take care of general council matters alongside Kuze, so Kuze glares at his sister, knowing she is certainly planning something. As Kuze exits the room, he hears a faint voice calling out for a master. She then asks him to follow her and Kuze complies. They move to a quieter area, where Ayano inquires if it's true that Kuze is running for the presidency with Alia. When Kuze confirms, Ayano reveals that his grandfather, the head of the family, is furious. The old man doesn't want Kuze interfering with Yuki's path to greatness. This angers Kuze, reminding him of how his grandfather had disowned him when he left the family and insisted that his relationship with Yuki be kept secret. Sighing at the situation, Kuze asks Ayano if she's here to probe his intentions on someone else's orders. But Ayano explains that as Yuki's retainer, it's her duty to understand what the other side wants. Kuze assures her that he has no intention of going up against Yuki, but had to make a move to advance the plot with Alia. However, Ayano struggles to understand and questions if Kuze is hurting Yuki on purpose to protect Alia's dream because he has feelings for her. Kuze firmly responds that he's helping Alia simply because what he wants to do and instructs Ayano to relay this to his grandfather. Before leaving, Ayano asks Kuze what he feels for Yuki and Kuze tells her that Yuki means the world to him and that hasn't changed. Later, Kuze is hanging out with his friends when Takashi and Hikaru excitedly show him a magazine featuring women with large mountains and ask him to pick one. Initially, Kuze tries to explain that he's not into such things, but not wanting his friends to think he's interested in men, he ends up picking a brown-haired girl. The boys then tease him, pointing out how the girl looks a lot like Masha. Before further questioning if Masha is someone Kuze thinks about when his shield hero is rising, 
but Kuze reminds them that Masha has a boyfriend. Suddenly, Kuze feels someone glaring at him. When he turns around, he finds Alia staring at him. Kuze quickly clarifies that the magazine belongs to Takshi. But as Alia takes her seat, the boys continue to press Kuze about his type in women. Eventually, Kuze admits that he wants to date a woman who he can also be friends with. However, after hearing this, Alia whispers in Russian that she would be the perfect match, making Kuze blush. This then made him suddenly recall a girl from his childhood and reveals that he wants someone with a bright smile. His friends agree, noting that it's important for a girl to be approachable. But Alia, who is known for her cold demeanor, becomes annoyed by Kuze's preference and makes a fuss. She then scolds Kuze for having a preference, and Alia confiscates Takeshi's mommy magazine. Meanwhile, Yuki asks Ayano if she's satisfied with her investigation, and Ayano responds that her faith in Kuze has been restored and relays everything Kuze said during their conversation. But when Yuki asks how serious Kuze was, Ayano reveals that he was so serious it made her tremble. Surprised, Yuki asks if Ayano is interested in Kuze, but Ayano clarifies that she respects him, just like how she respects Yuki. Before leaving, Ayano tells Yuki that Kuze said that she remains the most important to him. But overwhelmed by this, Yuki admits that she was about to lose her composure, but is reminded that this isn't an H-rated anime. To further please Yuki, Ayano mentions that everyone believes Yuki will win the election, thinking Alia's challenge is reckless. Yuki, please, expresses her excitement for the upcoming showdown with Kuze, finally having the chance to prove who the better sibling is. Later that day, the student council gathers in the room where Alia, Yuki, Masha, and Ayano are playing bluff. Meanwhile, Kuze, Kenzaki, and Chizaki watch from a distance. The boys discuss how Alia may seem cold but is actually quite emotional, while her older sister Masha is harder to read. Chizaki even jokes that Masha seems a bit unhinged and Kuze agrees with her. Their conversation is interrupted when Ayano, ever diligent, catches their attention. Kenzaki, curious, asks if her obedience stems from her role as a retainer, to which Ayano replies that she learned everything from her grandparents. Kuze adds that Ayano's grandparents used to work for Yuki's family. But when Chizaki and Kenzaki ask about her parents, Ayano explains that they're office workers and that she became a retainer both out of admiration for her grandparents. She goes on to admit that she trained throughout her childhood to become the best retainer anyone has ever seen. Just then, Masha joins the group, revealing that Alia scolded her for being annoying. While Kenzaki and Chizaki worry about Alia's well-being, Kuze and Masha assure them that Alia is actually enjoying the game with Yuki, which is a rare occurrence. Wanting to grab some refreshments, Masha asks Kuze to accompany her to the vending machine. After collecting everyone's orders, the two head out. On the way, Masha thanks Kuze for supporting Alia in her bid for the presidency. Kuze brushes it off, but Masha insists it's a big deal, as Alia is very competitive and now has someone to rely on. Curious, Kuze asks Masha if she deliberately hides her competitive nature from Alia. However, Masha admits that Alia is a serious child who gives her all in everything she does and she doesn't want to become another obstacle for Alia to overcome. As they approach a vending machine, Masha explains that she's going the extra mile for Alia because sibling relationships are complicated. This makes Kuze reflect on his own sister, wondering if Yuki is pretending to be clueless for his sake. He quickly dismisses the thought, concluding that Yuki is actually just clueless. Masha then accuses Kuze of doing the same thing, but Kuze admits that he acts like a jerk simply because he wants an easier life. In response, Masha pats his head and commends him for doing the bare minimum. The next day, Alia is confronted by Taniyama, who sternly accuses her of manipulating Kuze into partnering with her. Stunned by the accusation, Alia becomes speechless until Kuze, noticing the commotion, intervenes and demands that Taniyama apologize for her inappropriate words. Instead, Taniyama calls for a general meeting, determined to have Kuze expelled from the student council committee. This then marks the end of today's anime recap. If you enjoyed the video and want more of it, please support the channel by leaving a like and subscribe. Let's help us reach our current goal of 20k subscribers.